Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Bits. I'm Tips, and today we're going to learn about the Unity timeline. So, first up, let's watch a little clip that I put together last week to celebrate the launch of Starfield. Here it is. Okay, now as you can see, we're in the same scene that we were in for Starfield. The animations are gone. Let's recreate. So the first thing you want to go ahead and do is make sure that you've got access to the timeline. So we just go Window, Package Manager, under the Unity Registry, Timeline. Mine's already installed, so to open it up, we just want to go Window, Sequencing, Timeline. Now we've got our Timeline window, let's dock it down here out of the way. And now we're ready to get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a timeline now. I like to create an empty game object so we know where our timeline is. So now that we've got that, jump in here, come into the base. And let's call ourselves tutorial timeline. All right, now we're all set. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a track and we're going to choose an animation track. An animation track allows us to animate an object and change all of its details, transforms, etc. So let's grab our dropship, drop it in there. Perfect. Done. We're all set. Great. So, you know what our animation wants to look like. So let's hit record. Once we record, our bar goes red. And now we can actually set animation keys exactly like we would normally. Alright, so let's go to the end of our animation. For us, that's going to be 15 seconds. Uh, if you're not looking at the right view, what you can do is click on the settings icon up here in the corner and go ahead and change that to seconds instead of frames as the default. Alright, so we'll go to our scene view. So we know where we want to end up, so let's just grab our dropship while we're here. And we just want to move a tiny little bit, and that's going to set a frame. So there we go, so our dropship is here. So let's go now, back to the start of it. We're gonna fly over here across the terrain. And we're gonna hit Control Shift F with our dropship selected. And that's gonna put the dropship right where we are. All right, here we go. So now let's come back where we were. And let's have a look. If we scrub through our, our timeline, you'll see our ship comes flying in that's great so now where we end up is right here in this position so we know our z value is negative 385 but if you notice when we fly in we kind of just come in like this which feels a bit anticlimactic for a drop ship. so let's go to here let's grab our drop ship and we'll copy that component Go back a couple of seconds. What I want to do is paste those component values. And now let's bring our ship up. And now what's going to happen is our ship is going to fly in, reach that point, and then come down. All right, so then we take the spot that we come to a halt. It's looking great. What we want to do is have him put a little bit of a rotation and let's go back a couple of frames and then let's just undo that and now what we're going to see is we're going to come flying in to a halt and we're going to come down to a nice smooth landing that's looking pretty good all right, let's give it a play and uh, see how it looks.
All right, so we've landed, but we're still sitting on a bit of an angle. So let's get in and fix up that landing. So we'll jump back into record mode, get our timeline red again, jump ahead to that last frame. So we'll grab it right on. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Let's have a look. So while we're here, what I'm going to do is rotate this back nice and flat. There we go. And that's going to all right there we go we're coming in flat we have a bit of a swing into place and then we drop ourselves into position all right that's looking pretty great so now what we want me to do is after we land let's open our cargo bay so we're here so we'll grab our drop ship let's just have a look we want to grab our cargo door we want to just grab our leave it in we want to make sure that we are on our pivot point just put that door in just a smidge then we want to come out here to four seconds and let's just get that open into the ground it's coming out here all right that's perfect comes in and opens up and once we come there let's just go ahead half a frame that up and then we're just going to put that in there and if we watch our timeline we just get a little bit of a bump in there all right that's looking pretty great now you notice when the ship came in we had a little bit of noise playing so let's go to that on our dropship, we have an audio source. We've got our rocket thrust sound, and under spatial blend, we've got that set entirely to 3D. So that means now, when the song plays, uh, you notice your camera as an audio listener, and that's what's currently picking up the sound. So the configuration in here. Spatial blend set to 2D, just plays the sound universally from the point of view of the camera at a fixed volume. Whereas if we do it all the way at 3D, which is a value between 0 and 1, that'll play our sound in 3D. So we can actually recreate things like Doppler shift and that volume increasing as the rocket comes in. So now that we've got our landing successful and our pod bay door opens up, uh, let's get our feet to come down. So let's come to here where we start to, to come in. And we've actually got our feet. They're separate objects that come in Sinti Sci-Fi Worlds. We've just added those on here. So we'll, just, we'll grab these. For our pivot point, we're going to use those low. We want to use the local space. All right, so what we want to do is with those, we're just going to move them up a little bit relatively. And let's come down to landing time. And we want to bring those on down how are they looking that's looking pretty good but this front one though we need him to extend that foot out a little bit all right now let's scrub that back and back here where they started to come down we just want to retract that one back in All right, now we've got our feet coming in. As we come down for a landing, let's have a look and watch that part. Now the really great part to remember about tools like Timeline is exactly what we did with that initial flight. That you don't need to get everything done in a single pass. You can go back and continue to layer pieces into the animation to create the look and feel that you're after. So now that we've got that done, let's get our engine sorted. So let's come to, let's come back a bit where our engines are coming to a halt. And when we get to about here, we want to grab these two engine pods. I'll give those a little bit of a turn to set a key. Then we want to come as we start to come down. to rotate those into position to cushion our landing. And then 
after we land. Is that a little key? And the doors come down. Let's rotate those back into the horizontal position. All right. Let's jump out of record mode and check out how our timeline looks. Alright, that's looking pretty fantastic. The last thing we're going to do in our timeline is we're going to add in a sound. Because as those pistons come down, I really think that we can get a, we can get a good landing. So, let's find the contact point where our pistons hit the ground. So, just going to grab our, our timeline here, come in, come to a halt. Hit the ground. Looks like right about there. <laughs> all right, so fourteen ninety-five. That's no problem at all. So we've got this mechanical clamp here. All right, so it sounds like it's around about this point. just after this big peak and it comes down we want to line that up so what we want to do is let's pop our project view up and then in our timeline let's grab our mechanical clamp and we'll just drop it straight in so now let's zoom things a bit grab you make things a little easier to click to see and what we want to do is line that up. Now what you can do is click on the cog. Uh, you may have an option here that says audio scrubbing. Otherwise click on preferences page, click on enable audio scrubbing, close that. And now as you move your timeline, you'll actually be able to hear those sounds play. So let's check it out. <laughs> I think that is just a little bit back this way a bit from here. All right, let's try that. All right, that sounds pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll turn the audio scrubbing off. We don't need to hear that all the time. And then if we just select our audio source, what we can do is adjust the volume in here. So things playing directly in the timeline cannot be put in 3D space because they don't exist within the world. What we can do is just bring that volume down to what feels like a, a reasonable level. I think about a third of what it was before. Alright, so let's get our project view back out of sight. Our timeline. And I think we're ready to check out the final result. Alright folks, here we go. we go folks that's all there is to it thanks for coming with me and learning how to use timeline i'll see you in the next video